Hello everybody, Ignatius L. Jackson CPA here with a very, very important video for you. All right, so uh, I was going to talk about S corporations since we just finished the S corporation tax deadline uh, on September 15th, uh, but uh, you know what? Um, they recently released this bill for proposed tax changes, so we actually have some, some stuff in writing. Came out of the House Ways and Means Committee um, this week, and so, you know, I called an audible. We're gonna talk about it. I'm pretty fired up. There's some stuff in here that I really don't like. Um, I think it's gonna be detrimental to our economy as a whole. So, uh, you know what, just go ahead and stick around so we can get right on into it because man, I, I you're gonna be baffled by some of this stuff, okay? So stick around, be right back in a second. everybody we're back we're back we're back okay today we are talking about proposed changes that are going to go into effect primarily starting in tax year 2022 but there is uh, at least a couple changes that will be effective in uh tax year 2021 okay um and so you do have to pay attention to this um keep in mind that this is not anywhere near final okay the Senate is still working on their version of the bill. Uh, the House, you know, who knows, may end up actually changing the bill at some point. Uh, so right now it just came out of the committee and it hasn't officially been voted on by the House or passed. Uh, I do think they're trying to maybe potentially pass it by next week. Um, when, when I say next week, I'm recording this video on September the 18th. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, things may change pretty rapidly and pretty quickly with this. Um, ultimately, I think they want to get this thing done before the end of the year. Uh, obviously, uh, they've been working on it. This has been one of the big thing, this, things that they wanted to do. Um, so just wanted to kind of go through some of these key changes with you. Some of this stuff eh, I'm a little indifferent about because it doesn't really affect a lot of my uh, clients uh, or myself personally, but I know it could affect you know some others. And so you could be fired up about some of the, some of the things that I'm not fired up about. But you know, I at least wanted to kind of touch on some of the more important provisions of this that will impact business owners and individuals, um, you know, in terms of their retirement accounts, and things of that nature that you might have. So I wanted to talk about some of those really key changes that I think are gonna be potentially very detrimental to our economy as a whole. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and hop right on in, all right? So corporate tax rate changes is the first one I wanna to touch on. Uh, it's gonna to change to a graduated tax rate. Um, so it was, or I should say change back to a graduated tax rate. It was a graduated tax rate uh, before. Uh, they got rid of it with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, made it a flat tax of 21%. Now we're going back to a graduated tax rate. Um, there's basically three levels. I got 18% for those companies or corporations. These are C corporations, by the way, which majority of my clients are not C corporations. Majority of small businesses are not C corporations. So this really will primarily affect larger entities and corporations that are out there. But ultimately the first 400,000 would be 18%, okay? Uh, so you actually get a little bit more of a de decrease if you're under $400,000 of taxable income for a C corporation. 21% on the income up to $5 million for that next phase, okay? Um, and then 26.5% uh, for income above 5 million up to $10 million. If you have income above $10 million, then you don't get the graduated tax rate. You just pay a flat tax of 26.5%, okay? Um, personal service corporations also do not get the graduated tax rate system. They just pay a flat tax of 26.5%, okay? Personal service corporations are gonna be places like uh, law firms, uh, CPA firms, et cetera, that are you know, treating themselves as C corporations. Don't know why they would be anyways. Usually should be an S corporation. <laughs> Uh, if you're in that type of field um, but nevertheless if you are doing that there you go you're going to pay 26.5 percent of black tax okay off of the c corps individual tax rate changes all right uh, this might impact some of you guys that are high income earners uh, you might be irritated by this um, so uh, the tax rate currently is 37 uh, percent the top tax bracket is 37 percent 
if your taxable income is above six hundred twenty thousand three hundred dollars as for 2021 tax year currently okay based on the current law what the proposal is going to do is change that uh tax rate uh and this is going to start in 2022 uh at least that's what it's saying right now but basically it's going to change it to 450,000 married 425,000 head of household and 400,000 single okay you would now be in the top bracket basically for any income above that threshold all right so not only did they in increase the rate they also decreased the income threshold at which you get above and into that top bracket so we're going to have a lot more people paying a lot more taxes i feel like um that are making more than four hundred thousand uh, a year single or four hundred fifty thousand married so it's uh, i don't know that one again i'm a little indifferent about but I, who likes to pay more taxes period me <laughs> Not me i would I mean, uh, so I'm sure there's going to be some people that are going to be really irritated about that. Um, but yes, that's what's going on with that individual tax rate. Okay, let's move on to the capital gains rate. All right. So this one uh, is going to change to 25%. So currently the top rate is 20% and they're changing it to 25% or that's what they want to do anyways. Um, and this is going to be for those married for 2021 tax year all right it's going to be for those that are married and and let me clarify it's only for any transaction that occurs after uh september 13th of 2021 okay which is the date that they basically introduced this bill and it became public knowledge so they don't want people going out there and selling all their stuff now that they know what the tax rate is going to be later on i guess is, is the theory so ultimately if you haven't sold it already then you're kind of SOL if this ends up passing, okay, in its current form. So, but ultimately, uh, you know, if you have income of 501,600 married, 473, 750 for head of household, and 445, 850 for single, all right, and you had a transaction, a capital gains transaction, or qualified dividends that were paid to you after um, September 13th of 2021, then you're going to pay 25%. On that those items okay um if you had those transactions prior to september 13th 2021 then you'd pay 20 percent on those items at, for your capital gain trade okay um now starting in uh 2022 uh they're going to bring it back to where that top bracket for the 25 percent rate equals the top bracket for the individual tax rate so that goes back to those uh, those levels of 450,000 married, 425,000 head of household, and 400,000 single. You're going to start to see that top rate for capital gains um, at those levels going forward, starting in 2022. But for 2021, it's it's those uh, those levels that I just mentioned there. Okay. Now, for those that I want you also also keep in mind, this this doesn't change. Uh, for those that uh, or have AGI or a good adjusted gross income, okay, of 250,000 or more married and 200,000 single or head of household, you also have to pay a net investment income tax of 3.8%, okay, on your capital gain, which, uh, or a qualified dividend uh, income, okay. So ultimately, what that means is your top rate could be as high as 28.8% on that capital gain. Uh, income. Okay. So ultimately something to kind of think about and consider uh, in terms of, um, you know, whether you decide you want to sell something at this point or whether you want to just continue to hold it um, going into the future. So I will tell you one thing they did not make it into this proposal for this tax plan is a stepped up basis. Okay. Upon your death. Uh, so there is no stepped up basis when, when you, when you sell it or when you transfer your assets upon death. Um, but they do want to decrease the estate tax uh, exemption level by about half of where it currently is. Um, and so that would you know, definitely change at some point. Um, but ultimately, as long as you're passing on less than that estate tax exemption, then you should be able to potentially avoid paying taxes altogether if you were to hold the asset until death, um, barring any future changes in tax law at this point. Okay. Um, 
All right, next thing. Talk about capital gains. So that one, I capital gains is it, it, this is this is definitely one of those items that is going to stymie investment. I feel like it's going to really hurt the economy. You know, I, I I just feel like people are incentivized to invest when they get a tax break a certain way, right? And so, you know, it's just interesting that that they want to do this. But thankfully, they did not go as far as they were going to go or what uh, Biden wanted to do which was increase the capital gains rate to basically be the same as the ordinary income rate. So there would really be no advantage at all to doing, you know, investing and things of that nature. So thankfully they did not do that, but there still might be enough people that are irritated that they have to pay an extra 5% that maybe, you know, they, they're not as concerned about, you know, doing certain investments or whatnot. So anyways, just something to kind of throw out there and think about and consider, okay? Um, limitation on qualified business income. All right, so uh, this is a huge deduction that is available. If you're an S corporation partnership or sole proprietor, you get a 20% deduction on your business income, barring certain rules and uh, income thresholds and things of that nature that are out there. Okay, so the only thing they really change for this is there's a maximum deduction now of $500,000 married or 400,000 single or head of household uh, if, the, if the bill passes um, in its current form there would be a limitation on how much of a deduction you can get. Okay. So ultimately uh, 500,000 total uh, qualified business income deduction each year. Uh, if you're married is the max you would be able to get. Okay. If your modified adjusted gross income is more than 5 million, you would also need to pay a new tax. This is a brand new tax that they're introducing of an additional 3% of the modified adjusted gross income amount, bring in those total, the, the, those taxpayers to a top bracket of something north of 42.6%. Um, reason I say that is the 3% is based off your adjusted gross income. The 39.6% for the individual rate is based off your taxable income. And it's also a graduated um, tax uh, rate system. So yeah so you could very well be somewhere north of 42.6 percent on that income that exceeds um uh, that exceeds that top bracket uh that we're going to go to here like four hundred fifty thousand dollars if you're married you could be paying darn near 42.6 percent or more uh just depends on what that agi number is um and the, yeah I just don't even know any way around that. Uh, and that doesn't even include the state taxes. Keep that in mind. So if you're in a place like California or New York, where their top bracket, I think is, uh, their, their top bracket is double digits, like 12, 13 percent, something like that. I don't know off the top of my head. You could be paying over half of every dollar you make over $400,000 to the government. Does that make you feel good? sure as hell doesn't make me feel good. I don't know about you guys. So uh, if, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot of nasty calls that I'm going to have to deal with <laughs> in relation to some of this because they're going to be irritated and frustrated that they're going to have to pay all these extra taxes. It's crazy. Anywho. All right. So that's what we're going to touch on in regards to uh, taxes outside of retirement accounts. The next part of this video is talking about the changes that are affecting retirement accounts, which is what I'm probably the most heated about because it's complete bull crap that these guys are coming after retirement accounts when there's not really a sizable issue, in my opinion. I've talked about this in a previous video that I did where we went through some statistics and we looked at the numbers, and it's, I just don't see where the problem is that... Uh, the politicians are all up in an emotional arm. Uh, th to me, this is really an emotional argument as to why they're trying to do this. And when we go through some of these items, you're going to see that these are directly pointed towards people like Peter Till, who has a $5 billion Roth IRA. All right, because the things that are coming after are pretty much directly affecting him. All right. And he's probably one of just, uh, I don't know, couple hundred, couple thousand taxpayers that actually have accounts that are in excess of these new provisions that are going to be impacted by the, these changes that they're trying to make to the IRA accounts, okay? 
Um, I, 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 I don't see why the, the need is there. I mean, they're an outlier. If you think about it that way, we got some outliers that have sizable accounts. whoop de doo I mean, they, hey, more power to you. Um, but the reason that they got those sizable accounts, you have to think about, is because they were investing in companies, in entrepreneurship, in capitalism. Let me get this straight. Isn't that what the hell of the United States of America is about? Aren't we about investing in entities, entrepreneurship, capitalism? That's what our society is about. We should not care that some of these outliers have these sizable accounts. If it was a more broad issue, then I might be able to get on board with some of this crap, but it's not. And I'm gonna prove it to you with some actual numbers because a lot of what you hear out there in the media and everything, it's just a bunch of hyperbole and a bunch of foolishness that's trying to sell this to people, They're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> So that's all they're trying to do. They're trying to confuse you into thinking, oh man, yeah, screw the rich, screw you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, newsflash, the rich, they employ a lot of people. Huh? They have a lot of businesses. Huh? Um, they do a lot of stuff for our economy. They donate a lot of money to charity. Oh! <gasps> Uh, these are these are all things that are going to disincentivize them from wanting to continue to do certain things. I mean, anyways, let me get to some of these items, and we're going to come back to some of my opinion towards the end. You know, but let's talk about the actual stuff here. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, the combination of the fair value of all of your IRA accounts and your 401k plans or similar plans would not be able to be more than $10 million on a go forward basis if you have taxable income over 450,000 married, 425,000 head of household, and 400,000 single. So you'll notice those three levels are pretty much throughout this bill in terms of the people that they're coming after, which is basically what they were running on uh, you know, when they ran, is that they didn't want to impact people who are making less than 400,000 a year. Um, I'm kind of shocked that they actually held true to that um because you know i i definitely thought that single people making more than 200 you know thousand a year were probably going to get hit by this so you know thankfully that's one thing that they didn't do but ultimately uh, if you are over that threshold then you are no longer able to have an ira account that is greater than 10 million dollars okay now what that means is if the account exceeds 10 million dollars then you have to take a distribution which would be 50% uh, of the amount by which the accounts exceed the $10 million figure, okay? Now you can decide which accounts you wanna take those from, all right? But again, if all your accounts combined together, your retirement accounts exceed $10 million, then you'd have to take a 50% uh, distribution of the excess. So let's say your, your value of your account is a million dollars or $11 million, excuse me. And if it's $11 million, the excess is $1 million, so you'd have to take a distribution of $500,000 to uh, start to distribute some of those funds, okay? Now, the great thing is there's not an early withdrawal penalty if you are under the age of 59 and a half, but if it's in a pre-tax account, you do still have to pay taxes on it. As far as I know, as of right now, if it's in a Roth account, you do not have to pay taxes on it. Normally, if you take a distribution in a Roth account prior to 59 and a half, you have to pay taxes on the earnings that are in the account, but not your initial contributions or your basis in the Roth IRA. So hopefully that holds true. Um, again, once we get the final bill, we're gonna really dig deep into it and, and get you the exact information. But uh, as far as I know right now, you would not have to pay taxes on any required minimum distribution from your Roth if your account exceeds $10 million, okay? Um, so in essence, you, can't, you may have just gotten a bonus by them forcing you to take it out a little bit earlier than 59 and a half. Uh, the one downside is you don't get to continue to grow it um, and continue to have that tax-free growth. But anyways, okay. Nevertheless, not a fan of this change. If the accounts exceed $20 million and you have a Roth IRA or Roth 401k, 
uh, amounts, then you must first distribute up to 100% of those balances for either the Roth IRA or the Roth 401k, okay? Um, until you get to $20 million. And then at that point, to get down to the required 50% rule um, for the distribution, you can choose which accounts you want to do at that point to get you down to that rule. Now, this one in particular, you have to imagine is directly related to Peter Till. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mitt Romney is another example who has an account in excess of $20 million. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely several, you know, hundreds or thousands of people out there that have accounts that are greater than $20 million that are going to be impacted by this. Okay. Um, but it's, it seems too much of a coincidence that we had an article from ProPublica, those bastards. And, <laughs> and then here we go with this tax law changes and voila, uh, they're basically doing something that's going to directly affect Peter Till. And he's going to have to basically distribute if this goes into effect, damn near $5 billion worth of items. So anyways, something to think about. Okay. Uh, backdoor Roth IRA. Huge, awesome, fantastic strategy that we talk about all the time. That's going to go away for anyone who makes over those thresholds. $450,000 married, $425,000 head of household, $400,000 single. Okay. It's going to go away. I don't really see what the point is of this, honestly. I'm going to talk about the numbers a little bit later. But if you think about it, a Roth IRA contribution, $6,000 a year. What? Who cares? Just get rid of the income threshold. There's no need for the backdoor Roth anymore. Just let people put $6,000 a year into a Roth IRA. Social Security is not going to be around. People have to save for their own retirement. At least that's my opinion. For you know, people that are younger like I am, you know, I still have a good 30 to uh, 40 working years left in my lifetime. And so hey, by the time I get around, uh, based on the statistics that we're seeing out there, Social Security is going to be depleted in the next, I think, five to 10 years is what I've, I believe I've read. So, yeah. Why am I doing that? I need to save in for my own retirement and for my own family. And for my own multi-generational wealth, <sighs> oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, the backdoor Roth is going away. All right. Um, now you can still contribute to a Roth. Keep in mind, if you have a 401k at work or if you're a small business and you have a solo 401k or even a safe harbor 401k, you can still make for your employee contributions, a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k contribution for $19,500, I believe it is for 2021. Um, it was for 2020. I don't, I can't remember if they increased it or not for 2021, but ultimately 19,500 roughly. Okay. You can make that contribution. Okay. To your retirement account. Pretty awesome. All right. Um, that doesn't go away. Thankfully that stays the same. Okay. But what they're doing is going after the additional $6,000 that you could do right now into a Roth IRA each year as well. All right. They are also eliminating the option to do a mega backdoor Roth IRA. Okay. The mega backdoor Roth IRA I've talked about before, but ultimately just quick summary, high level. You do after tax contribution into your 401k at work or through uh, your small business. And then you convert that to Roth dollars whether it's a Roth 401k or Roth IRA, all right? And then now all the earnings are going to be tax-free into the future, okay? They're getting, they're getting rid of that, basically. They're, they're not going to allow you to have the, the tax-free earnings. So you, I, I don't know. Anywho. Um, and they're also, I'm sorry, they're, they're also eliminating the ability to even do after-tax contributions. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, so it, it's just completely gone. Um, so yeah, it's hopefully that doesn't pass. I mean, I, if you want to get rid of the mega backdoor Roth, I can, I, I can kind of get on board with that one. That might be a little too sweet, right? But don't get rid of the additional after-tax contributions. I mean, there's some people who could really utilize that. 
um, to help them save for their retirement, especially if they're playing catch up, you know, and, and they haven't really been saving. And that's a lot of Americans that have not been saving and, you know, they need to play catch up. And so, you know, hopefully they can, they'll, they'll at least keep that in. Okay. Other changes to the retirement accounts. Uh, if you like to invest your IRA assets in alternative investments that require you to be an accredited investor, then you will no longer be able to do this. That's <laughs> just long story short, uh, regardless of income level, which means basically there's a lot of IRA dollars and retirement dollars that go into alternative investments for private companies, startup companies, other private entities, et cetera, uh, who have the huge potential of going, you know, like skyrocketing, but also often go down and you lose your money completely. So it's a huge risk that people are taking to invest in these, these entities. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it's just sad that we, we can't, you know, continue to do that because I, I don't, what, what I think is going to happen if this does actually go through is I think you're going to see the crowdfunding campaigns increase quite substantially. So you're going to start to see a lot more regulation A plus and regulation CF investments out there. Um, we're already starting to see a huge increase, but I think we're going to see even more because those do not require you to be a, an accredited investor. So if I'm reading this rule correctly, you could still invest in those types of items or, or entities as long as you're not required to be an accredited investor to do the investment. So what we're talking about here are like the, the Reg D or uh, 506C type offerings. Those are what we're talking about where everyone who invests has to be an accredited investor under the SEC rules. So that's what they're basically going after here. This one is going to be, I think, super detrimental to our economy and to you know, investments in general. And I, I really hope that this one get, goes away because there's a lot of businesses, including some of my clients, who are getting a lot of dollars from people investing through their IRA or through their 401k. Um, there's even a lot of real estate investors that get private money and hard money loans from people investing their IRA and 401k assets into these items. I'm not too clear if this also affects 401ks. Everything that I've read so far has been saying IRAs, but all the other changes they specifically said affects both IRAs and defined contribution plans, which are basically 401ks, uh, the 403bs, all that kind of stuff out there where you can put money into your own retirement. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see to see if, if this particular provision also affects 401ks. Um, a, 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 so hopefully it doesn't. Uh, hopefully this is just an IRA thing if it does actually go through, um, because that will that will at least let you know those who have 401k assets um, and they have the ability to self-direct it, they can still go and uh, do those private investments because, yeah, it, otherwise it's going to be super, super detrimental. Okay. Um, for other self-directed, uh, you know, types of accounts where you might have an LLC, uh, so your IRA LLC, very common in the marketplace, has had a lot of growth recently because it's gotten a lot of popularity out there. Um, people, you know, wanting to do other stuff besides just invest in the stock market. Great, great strategies. I mean, investing in cryptocurrency, um, investing in real estate, uh, all kinds of things that having an LLC in place just makes it a little bit easier. Um, than having to go directly through your custodian. But they're basically going to say, you can't do the IRA LLCs anymore. They're going away. Um, so the strategies where we're talking about, like partnering up with, you know, your spouses, your children's accounts, et cetera, you can't do any of that stuff anymore because you can't invest in LLCs anymore where you own more than, basically you can't invest in any company where you own more than 10% or your family or close family um, or your lineal descendants, stuff like that, own more than 10%, okay? So basically, you can't invest in any of those entities anymore um, unless they're publicly traded. That's the one exception <laughs> to that rule, if they're publicly traded and you're not an officer or director of the company, okay? So if you're an officer or director of the company or you own 10% or more um, of a non-publicly traded company, then basically you're, yeah, SOL there, okay? Um, if you have any investments that do violate this currently, then you do have two years, basically. Uh, so by the end of December 31st of 2023, essentially, uh, I believe is the time frame, 
to distribute those investments or dispose of those investments in some way, shape or form. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can get out of those investments because worst case, if you can't get out of those, then the IRA account that you're in basically goes away, which is definitely not something you want to have happen. Um, and you have to end up distributing all of that and taking any tax hit or penalties or whatever might occur, I believe. So it, this is, this one is a big one. Like I, obviously I do this. I, I've talked about it all the time. So I, I do this for my IRA. Uh, I have a lot of clients who do this for their IRA. It's a great strategy. Um, there's a lot of great companies out there that help people do this. And it's an awesome way to build, you know, some income and some wealth. Okay. Um, and this one, by the way, is no income threshold. This is for every IRA account. You cannot do this anymore. All right. It's not like the backdoor Roth where if you're under a certain threshold, you still get to do, you know, uh, the backdoor Roth. Um, it's not like the, uh, the $10 million, $20 million excess stuff. This one is affects every single IRA account. Uh, if you have an IRA LLC, that has to basically go away. If you have investments in companies where you own 10% or more, that has to go away. If you have an investments in a company where you're an officer or director, it has to go away. I think you could also not be an officer or director anymore, potentially. Um, that might be another way to solve the problem, but ultimately something has to change and it has to go away. Okay. Otherwise you're gonna be in violation and have some detrimental items. Okay. Um, and the last thing that I, I'll just touch on, this is, not, this is not directly related to IRAs, but it is something that's important to kind of think about and understand is that they are giving the IRS $79 billion of additional funding to go out and force all this crap um, and also you know, audit the rich a little bit more uh, or who they define as the rich, I guess. Um, and again, this isn't, that's not supposed to be utilized to increase audits or really go after people who are making taxable income less than 400,000 a year is what they said in, in the proposal. So that's not the intention, but we all know what would happen. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier to, to audit the small person than it is to go out there and audit someone who has a team of accountants and lawyers behind them uh, to represent them. So, all right. So that's the actual changes that I felt were important that I wanted to touch on. Now let's talk about why, again, back to my opinion a little bit, why I think this is a huge overreach. All right. And this is the, the most important part of the video, if you ask me, because this is what they're not going to talk about out there in the public media and anywhere that you're, you're seeing information about this. They won't talk about this because this is completely in opposition to their argument. Trying to watch my language here. I don't want to get a crazy rating or get in trouble with anybody. But anyways, why I think this is a massive outreach or, or excuse me, overreach. As of 2018, so we talked about statistics previously. I'm just going to re refresh your memory on some of these. As of 2018, there was $9.1 trillion in fair market value in all IRAs. Okay. Of that $8.2 trillion or 90%, was held by those making less than $500,000 per year of adjusted gross income. 90% of all IRAs are held by people making less than $500,000 per year of adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross income is before deductions. So that means those thresholds that we were talking about are taxable income items. Okay. So that means for those that are making adjusted gross income of 500,000 per year, the taxable income is something lower than that. So it might be right in line with, you know, kind of where, where we're talking about here. So basically 90% of all accounts in IRAs are held by those making less than 500,000 per year. Food for thought. Roth conversions. In 2018, 13.7 billion Roth conversions were completed in 2018, of which 10.6 billion or 77% was from those with AGI, adjusted gross income, less than $500,000. 
again, the overall majority of all Roth conversions were for those with an AGI, adjusted gross income, less than $500,000. Also keep in mind, when you do a Roth conversion, you pay taxes when you do that conversion. There's only one exception. When you're converting and doing a backdoor Roth strategy, you don't pay taxes on your contribution as a non-deductible contribution because you never got a deduction for it to begin with. That's the only exception to that rule. All of the, all the other conversions are paying taxes on those conversions. And I can tell you just from experience, the majority of the conversions that I experience and deal with are taxable. There's, there's not very many that are, you know, they're, they're, they're taxable. Okay. So what's wrong with doing conversions if they're paying tax on the conversion? Think about that. Food for thought. The total amount of the Roth IRA dollars is only $845.9 billion of the $9.1 trillion that are sitting inside of all IRA accounts. Let's do the math on that. That's a whopping 9.3% of all IRA balances are Roth IRAs. So that basically means the other 8.3 trillion is sitting inside of pre-tax accounts. Meaning, oh my gosh, they're gonna eventually be taxed. So what's the problem? Let's think about this people. Let's think about this. For those with AGI above $500,000, there is a total of $914 billion in IRA accounts amongst 2.2 million taxpayers. So we're talking about people that are above the threshold that they're going after. Eight point, or sorry, 914 billion over 2.2 million taxpayers, which is an average account size of a whopping $413,141. Like seriously, the average account size for those making more than $500,000 a year, AGI, is $413,141. What the hell are we talking about, people? Like, seriously, I, I, I really don't understand why this is an issue. This is crazy. Again, there are a few outliers. Trust me, I understand the frustration. I understand the emotions behind it. I understand that you're pissed because you didn't do it. But get your... Get off your butt and go do it. You, I can tell you how many of my clients I actually talk about this stuff with, and they're afraid to do it. This shouldn't be why you're afraid to do it. This is an overreach by the government as far as I'm concerned. You should be doing it. This is how you build wealth. You do it in a tax advantaged way. Paying taxes as you're building wealth is... You, you're gonna decrease the amount of wealth that you can create. We have a huge wealth disparity in this country, okay? And some of these provisions, I, I don't know if they're gonna do anything to change that. That might be their intention, but it's not really gonna do anything to change it, to be honest, because you're, you're stymieing others from wanting to do this because you're acting like they're a problem. <laughs> And people are just going to be even more afraid to go out there and do these things. I, there's so many people who don't trust the stock market. So many people, which is why there's a lot of people who still don't even have IRA accounts, period, or 401k accounts, because they don't want to put the money in the stock market. So they do other investments, whatever it might be, real estate, put their money in a mattress, uh, savings account in their bank, certificates of deposit, bonds. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it, if we just get the word out about this stuff, I think that the, you see a lot more people that have lower income that are having decent sized accounts that are, hey, we're, we're bridging the wealth gap in the country. That is something that should be wanted. We want to bridge the wealth gap. What you're doing here, I don't think it's gonna really change the fact that there's a wealth gap in the country. It's still gonna be there. I'm, I, I, I'm just saying, I'm speaking to all the politicians that are for this crap. It's still going to be there. I mean, there's really just no way around this. It's, I just, you, you, they, they, they act like it's a huge issue, but the numbers don't support their perspective. 
I'm really trying to understand the numbers. It's it's basically a money grab. That is is the way that I'm thinking about it. Is all they're just trying to do is just get more money, so they can waste it more, and abuse their power, and all kinds of other crap. All politicians do it, in my opinion. But hey, it is what it is. Um, you know, I to me, I'd rather have more money in my pocket, and to be able to decide how I want to go out there and and spend it. You know, give money to causes that. Uh, you know, I care about, um, you know, make sure that, you know, I'm giving to places that aren't wasting it. You know, um, the government wastes so much money. I mean, so much money. It's absolutely absurd. Um, any, anybody with half a brain would know that. So paying more taxes, I don't care if you're rich or poor or whatever, you shouldn't want anyone have to have to pay more taxes um, when there's so much waste that's out there. You know, if, if I thought this money was going to go all to the right places, I may not be so heated about it. I may not be so upset, but this this is just complete malarkey and, and, and BS. I mean, I, I just <laughs> it's going to disincentivize, disincentivize businesses and people from making certain investments. Um, it's going to disincentivize businesses from growing beyond a certain point. Take my firm, for example. I know I will never want to get above these thresholds if this goes through because I don't want to pay that much in taxes. Why would I work my butt off? And it takes a lot of work to run a business. Please let, let me tell you right now, the CEOs and owners of businesses work hands down a lot more than their employees do, okay, uh, and, and your average you know, person. You know, they're up at 3 a.m. in the morning doing stuff for their business. I mean, you, they work a lot. They work hard. They should be able to benefit from their work without having to give so much away to the government. Um, so, yes, I think it's going to disincentivize people from wanting to do too much. I mean, and you're going to see, I feel like, um, people just not caring about wanting to grow and to further the capitalist society that we live in based on the way that this legislation is written. Again, this is just my opinion. If you don't dis if you disagree, by all means, leave a comment. I'm happy to defend anything I'm saying, you know, um, and, and I could have said something incorrectly on here. So pardon me if, if I did, um, you know, this we're all still, you know, gathering some of this stuff and and learning about it. Again, please, you know, leave a comment. Just let me know so I can correct it. If there is something that's wrong, I'll correct it. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I, I'm just baffled by what I'm, what I'm reading and what I'm seeing here. Um, thankfully, this is a lot really far from the finish line. Uh, we haven't seen what came out of the Senate yet. So hopefully, you know, they have some more reasoned uh, things that are coming out from their side. Um, and, and we can, you know, go away with some of this crap that the, the house has, has put together. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think, you know, going after these IRA accounts, going after the rich is definitely going to stymie, you know, investments, um, and, uh, businesses and the capital that businesses need to get. I mean, there's a lot of banks that will not lend to startup businesses. There's a lot of banks that won't give to people with bad credit. Um, these are all things that private money and uh, those that have retirement accounts, that's what they do because it's, it's something that will give them a greater return typically than just sticking it in the stock market. So anyways, I got to end this. I, I, this has probably been really long. I apologize. I don't even know how long it is. I was a little bit on a rant, but thank you for sticking through if you stuck with me this, way, this far. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, well, <laughs> as much as you can, you know, it's considering they're basically giving it to you up the rear end. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, right. basically, if you make more than $450,000 a year married, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Um, if, if this goes through, I'm, I'm sorry, because there's not, <laughs> there's not much that, even me being a CPA, we could really do about that. But um, 
yeah, no, I'm just there, there's going to be some strategies that come out of this. I'm just kidding. Like, there, there's going to be stuff that comes out of this if this goes through, um, you know, but there could be a point where we've done everything that we can and you're still above that threshold. And so you're, you're still stuck with paying, you know, some of those taxes. So but there's definitely things that we can do to decrease your taxable income and things of that nature that are still going to be around, still be available to you. Um, it's just a matter of doing effective planning. It, it, I will tell you, if this goes through, this is a year more than any other year where you want to be talking to your tax professional before the end of the year. Let me repeat that before the end of the year and do not wait until December 29th to talk, call your tax professional. We like to take vacation around the Christmas holiday, just like everybody else. All right. Because then we're going to run into January 1st and just start running, you know, with getting stuff done. So yeah, please, you know, reach out in advance. If this goes through, and get with your professional, get on the calendar, talk with them about it. Um, and if you don't have the right professional that is willing to put in the effort and time to understand this stuff, then hey, um, find another one. Whether that's me or someone else, I don't care. Just find someone that's competent that understands all this stuff as, as it goes through, if it goes through. I'm still hoping that it doesn't go through, but everything that I'm hearing says that we're gonna get something uh, will it be as bad as what we're reading and 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 what we've talked about today? Maybe not, but or hopefully not, I should say even. Uh, but it sounds like we're going to get something, some type of increase, some type of new bill here, and so bam. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been another wonderful episode <laughs> of uh, uh, or YouTube video, excuse me. Um, and, uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out my podcast with my co-host, Eric Pierre, CK, um, definitely, um, check that out. It's called CPA huddle. Um, you know, I, I just realized I've never really talked about it on, on the YouTube channel here, but yeah, definitely check it out. CPA huddle. Um, you find it on Apple, Spotify, any other place that you listen to podcasts and, uh, yeah, definitely let me know what you think about that as well. But yeah, please, please leave a comment, questions, all that good stuff. I'll try to respond to, to as much many, many and as much as I can. Um, and hope you guys have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.